Welcome back to Black News Tonight. My next guest is probably a familiar face to you. You have seen Tammy Roman on VH1's Basketball Wives and all over your television. She currently stars on the Apple TV series Truth Be Told, and today she's here to talk about her new BET Plus series, The Miss Pat Show, where she stars as Miss Pat's sister, Denise. Let's take a look. Hey, Pat Pat. Why you home so early? Them <laughs> quired me, sis. What the f is quired? Fired me when I was about to quit. <laughs> Created and executive produced by Jordan E. Cooper, The Miss Pat Show is a rated R comedy filled in front of a live audience. It brings all the humor to the stage and shows main character Pat Big Heart. Uh, the viewers get to see that and they get to see a show that centers around an ex formerly convicted person, we should say, trying to live a normal suburban life with her family. Please welcome to the show, the ever so lovely, the legend, Miss Tammy Roman. Tammy, good to see you. Hi, it's good to see you as well. <laughs> I know. Normally, normally when I see you, we on the couch in LA doing one of the basketball wives reunion, and me, you, and Shawnee are, yeah. are, are, are talking. Trish, <laughs> let me not curse. Talking about folk and laughing. <laughs> yes, yes. Don't remind me. <laughs> because we so this, definitely this, had this some nice. moments this is... on that couch. Oh my God, it was so much fun. But this is even better because I'm, I'm glad that you are uh, in this new space doing the kind of stuff that I know you always wanted to do. Uh, earlier this week, we had uh, Jordan on with us. Uh, he talked about the show and he talked about sort of how important you were to it. How do you see your character on this show? I love my character. Anytime that I get the opportunity to make people laugh and still be able to utilize some of the dialogue and the situations or scenarios as teachable moments is always a positive for an actor. So for me, Denise is everything. You know, she's, she's had her struggles, but now she's trying to come out on the other side of them. And that's definitely a positive message that people need to latch on to. Do you see yourself in the character at all? In terms of her humor, and she's she's very wry and dry. I think that I have that. Um, she's very honest and very real. I think that I'm that. Um, in terms of battling addiction, I ain't got that one, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. Look, the the show is a rated R comedy, right? Which people yes. are not. Uh, you, I'm not even used to that. And when I, you know. I, I'm kind of excited about that. I've seen some clips from the show, and I'm like, oh, this is funny. They cussing, cussing. Uh, how hard was that for you to pivot into that realm? What, cussing, cussing, as you said? <laughs> <laughs> not, not hard at all. <laughs> I was actually like, woo, I get to talk like myself. Um, but I, I think what Miss Pat and Jordan are doing with the Miss Pat show and BET Plus being the platform that's allowing them to have this level of creativity is what's needed because people float through and Hollywood has a tendency to give you that Hollywood ending or that stereotypical ending. I think this is the first time that a comedy has been done in a way where it really feels real. You feel almost like a voyeur looking into some family that you know, if not your own family. And people, people, talk, I mean, I, I talk like this. So for me, it was, it, it's the perfect show. <laughs> but it's definitely a grown folks comedy and we're very honest about that. Does the live audience shake you at all? You know, it's kind of, I remember like when Rock back in the day went from, you know, pre-tapes right. to like in front of a live audience and had like a stage play right. kind of feel to it, which, which is pressure. Like, how do you feel about performing in front of that audience? I love it. I love it so much because it's instant gratification. You know, when you're sitting at home watching mm. it, I don't know if my jokes landed. I don't know if my delivery landed. I don't know if you even think the show is funny. But right there in the moment when we're taping in front of the live studio audience, we know. And we were killing every night. I felt like I was on Broadway. It was like, yes, another mm. hit show, one in the can, you know. So... For me, it was very easy to do, you know, Steve Harvey used to be in front of a live audience. The Parkers were in front of a live audience. And I've had guest starring roles on those shows back in the day. So it was just stepping back into it like riding a bicycle. Let me ask you a professional question. And this is something that we've all gone through where 
you've had something that's working, it pays money, it's doing well, and you have to make a decision to leave. You made a decision to walk away from the Basketball Wise franchise. All of us have had a, t a moment we walked away from a steady, good check for something bigger. How challenging was it for you to make that shift away from Basketball Wise into the stuff you're doing now? Quite honestly, it was the hardest decision that I, I've, I've made in a long time because, like you said, it does pay well, you know, for the most part, you know, it's like riding a bike reality TV. You know what you got to do. You know what you're, you know, what the situation is when you enter into it. So I had gotten very complacent. And, you know, I'm not going to say that I left for something bigger because I didn't know what was out there. At the time that I left basketball wise, I only had truth be told and I was recurring and, you know, and family business. We didn't know if it was going to be picked up. So I didn't know what was waiting for me, but I knew that I had, you know, stayed enough time in the basketball wise franchise that I feel like I had given all that I could give. And there was nothing left, you know, and so I had to make the transition or, you know, I was going to be doing a disservice to myself. No, it, it makes sense. I remember when you left, like I was literally <laughs> sitting across from me when you left, you walked off that reunion stage and I said, hey, I say never coming yes. back. <laughs> Do not pass right. go. She ain't coming back. She ain't picking up the last check. <laughs> she ain't going to no yeah, exit interview. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm it was great. Gone. It, it, it was I, the right I've move. had enough. Yeah, it definitely yeah, was. So and let, and let me be clear. I, I don't want people to think that I'm dogging basketball wise. Basketball wise was very instrumental in keeping me a part of pop culture in terms of today's time and what's happening with social media and the younger generation. It is a staple. It is definitely a brand and a franchise. And I feel blessed to have been a part. What what I want people to understand is that some things are for a season, some things are for a reason. And I feel like Basketball Wives was both a season and a reason for me, you know, and 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 leaving was just what was necessary in order for me to evolve and to grow and to utilize more creativity in the things that I want to do for the rest of my life. I'm 51 now. So I don't want to be still on TV arguing and tussling with people. You know, that's just not what I choose to do. And I wanted to move into a more scripted format. What's next for you? You know, you already got two shows now. You know, this one's going to be a hit. I'm already naming and claiming that for you. What's the next thing Thank for 2021 you. and 2022? Uh, well, I just executive produced a show with uh, Kim Fields called Vicious that we're excited about uh, bringing to the people. I've also got a new show that's coming with uh, VH1 that's coming down the pipeline that I'm excited about. I've got a cookbook. I've got a new wine line that I'm introducing uh, this fall. And so, you know, I'm just trying to do it all, Mark. I mean, it's like, you know, Diddy says sleep when you're dead. And that's one thing that I agree with. You know, I'm trying to make it happen, which is important for me really quickly, just because I, I really want to focus on breaking the generational cycles and things that have been happening in my family in particular, and being able to leave my children a, a legacy that, that they can be proud of and b giving them an opportunity to be able to be successful because as African-American women, we're always starting at the bottom and trying to claw our way to the top. And I want my daughters to, to have a different starting point for their lives. And so I'm, I'm working, I'm working till the wheels fall off. I'm working till my back say, sit down, you can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you making it happen. The legacy part you already got down, you've already cemented your, yourself there. And the money, I, I ain't counting your pockets, but from all these jobs, I know some money's there. Next time I see you in LA, food and drinks is on you. Oh yeah, there's, no, there's the money. no money issue. <laughs> There's no money issue. Thank God he has changed things around. But uh, yeah, no, drinks are on me. I absolutely, let's do it. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> see, see, I'm see, ready. see how I said food and drinks and she switches the drinks? That's smooth. But I'm going to yeah. let you have that. Tammy, yeah. I'm going to see you. <laughs> I'm going to see you later, Tammy. Thank you so much for joining us. Everybody, make sure you check out Thank the Miss Pat Show. It premieres tonight on BET+. Plus. It's a great show. You definitely want to check it out. Everybody, stay with me. We're going to see what's happening on the digital streets.